Okay, this video is called um, Book Review, and the name of the book is Cancer and the Biology of Water, or The New Biology of Water by Thomas Cohen, MD. And so, the book was written in 2019. <clears throat> it's an entertaining book. Um, there's a couple of very interesting things about it. I wish he would have gone into more detail. He tends to bring something up and then not really develop it as much as I hoped he would. I thought this quote at the beginning was great. The man in the street does not notice the devil, even when the devil is holding him by the throat. Yeah, that's an amazing thing. It's been my experience that most people, they have a completely unrealistic sense of how the world works. They think that like the world likes them and is in their best interest. <laughs> I always laugh at that. I'm like, why do you think there's F minus in your water? Because somebody likes you? Why do you think, you know, processed food is subsidized? Because somebody likes you for GMO soy spray with GP? I mean, come on. So anyways, the main point of this book by Cohen is that the somatic mutation theory of cancer is wrong. And I would agree with that. I've read quite a lot about cancer. And I think the biggest problem in cancer is, and this is something typical in medicine, medicine as a field will cling to an old theory even when it's been disproven It'll take a long time before they transition to a new way of looking at things. And the somatic mutation theory, I mean, the Genome Atlas product just basically showed it doesn't work. You know, a lot of researchers gave up on researching cancer after the Genome Atlas project, okay? And the reason why cancer research really hasn't made much progress in over 50 years is because it's focused on the wrong things because it's trying to go by the somatic mutation theory. Um, Dr. Cohen recommends cancer researchers explore other approaches to treatment. I'm going to show you something great. And on the next slide, I got something great. That's going to be an AO. That's going to be an amazing thing. But just go through this real quick. Um, uh, the book's weak on diet too, so I thought that was a disappointment. Um, the structured water stuff regarding deuterium depleted water. There might be something interesting about that in the future. I'll have to study it more. Uh, this book had a good intro to it, and I've read another book on it, but it's, it's, not, it's not ready for prime time yet. Um, he also talks about Dr. Dr. Seyfried. Dr. Thomas Seyfried is the guy who did all that work on the metabolic theory of cancer, which is pretty good. But then he, after doing all that great research work, he then comes and says something that I thought was kind of stupid, sort of like a paleo-keto approach to treating cancer. And he realizes in order to make that work well, he's going to have to use blood sugar-lowering sugar drugs probably, it's uh, discussed on page 23 and 99 of Cowan's book. But there's a problem with that, obviously. If you're dropping the blood glucose too low, then the brain's not going to get enough. So are you going to get brain side effects from that? I don't know, but it just sounds crazy to me. You know, meat's like one of the worst things you could give a cancer patient. So you're going to somehow think that's a good idea. I talked about the problem also, that glutamine can come in the back door on Krebs cycle. And so you, you, you can't win the game by just focusing on, on blood glucose. That doesn't, it's not going to work. Um, the book talks about Gerson's approach, Quinton's approach, and other oncology pioneers. Uh, they talked about Lourdes, France. So I thought all those things were interesting. Uh, Dr. Cowan says we need to stop trusting the experts, especially when their conclusions contradict our own experience. So it was, you know, iconoclast, and all of that was good. I like the fact he talks about how fever improves immune function. So there might be something useful in that. But anyways, I'll show you the next uh, slide or two here, and there's going to be something quite interesting coming up. He mentions the papers. There was two really giant extensive summaries of the research on cancer chemotherapy. So this paper was written by Ulrich Abel. He's a German scientist, expert in statistics, and he read thousands and thousands of papers on uh, cancer chemotherapy. And he discussed his insights with oncologists and he came to the conclusion that for the epithelial cancers which means you know almost all the common cancers with metastases the benefit from chemo is virtually non-existent very small with the exception of small cell lung carcinoma um, and so here's the paper and as usual when there's a paper critical of something that's very profitable you'll get um, just an abstract you won't get the full paper without paying for it so that's called hiding the information behind a paywall. So here's what he says, apart from lung cancer, in particular small cell lung cancer, there is no direct evidence that chemotherapy prolongs survival in patients with advanced carcinoma, okay, suggesting metastatic disease. But as we talked about with McDougall, lots of patients by the time you can diagnose it probably have micrometastatic disease, at least micrometastatic. 
Okay, he goes on to say there might be some subgroups who benefit from it, but from the available research, it's not possible to clearly sort out those groups too well. And then he says many oncologists take it as a, for granted that a response to therapy prolongs survival, an opinion which is based on a fallacy and which is not, not supported by clinical studies. So what does that mean, a response? Patients often get this confused. They routinely get this confused. Doctors routinely get this confused. A response just means that the tumor shrinks on a follow-up CAT scan. But the point is, just because the tumor shrinks doesn't mean the patient's going to live longer. The feeling is that quite often the stem cells of the tumor are not affected by the chemotherapy and that they just come roaring back and kill the patient. So, you know, there's some tumors that tend to have stem cells that will be affected by the, uh, the cancer chemotherapy, like uh, testicular carcinoma, for example. And then there's diff these are epithelial cancers. There are some less common forms of cancer, and these are adult epithelial cancers, you know, some pediatric leukemias and whatnot that are more likely to sp respond to chemo. Uh, but in an adult, one should know if you're likely to get a response, because quite often the attitude basically is the patient has such a poor prognosis, they're going to die anyways, why not give chemotherapy a try? But the counter argument would be, well, the chemotherapy is going to make them sicker, have side effects, so why not let them, you know, feel better for the time of life that they have left? You know, if you're going to die in one year, one way, either way, why not die with fewer side effects and enjoy better the time you have left? Uh, but here's a conclusion in this paper, and this is incredibly strong conclusion. With few exceptions, there is good scientific basis for the. There is no good scientific basis for the application of chemotherapy in symptom-free patients with advanced epithelial malignancy. Uh, so that's pretty strong words and rather interesting. And then there was another giant independent review of chemotherapy. This was done by this group here, Ward, Barton, and Morgan. And this was paper was published in 2004, okay? And they studied for 22 adult malignancies both in Australia and in the USA. And the conclusion they came to was when you look at five-year survival, and this is for different stages of cancer, the benefit to survival from chemotherapy was only 2.3% in Australia and 2.1% in USA. So that's incredibly poor. I mean, do, do you understand that? That after having chemotherapy, the amount that it only added overall to survival for these 22 different types of adult cancer was about 2%, okay? A 2% benefit in survival, that's almost nothing. And you can bet that chemo quite often has very severe side effects. So obviously one always has to look at the details of the individual case and of the different type of cancer. But the overall point of view of these papers, and these are the two big giant papers, these are also mentioned by Travis Christofferson in his book, Tripping Over the Truth, which is kind of a, that's a nice book for summary of the problems with the somatic mutation theory and the, the advantages and accuracy and research support for the Metabolic Theory of Cancer was that book by Travis Christofferson. But anyways, I thought this book was good in you know giving you these references so you can see them. And once again, this article, of course, is behind a paywall. To see the entire article, you have to pay for it. But trust me, this is incredible. And so here's, here's what's conclusion. It is clear that cytotoxic chemotherapy only makes a minor contribution to cancer survival. And so that's why, you know, what I would tell a person is look very carefully at whether or not chemotherapy is truly in your benefit, okay? You know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Quite often it's not, and one needs to check their own individual case. And once a person realizes that that isn't going to save them, um, quite often that seems to be the case, they can motivate themselves to try to do all the other stuff, which may or may not save them, but um, it'll certainly have a lot fewer side effects, most likely, so it's good to be informed. One can make wiser decisions. Uh, so anyways, I thought that was interesting.